everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Economics, Principles, and Applications, 6th edition, by Robert Hall and Mark Lieberman. We're going to be doing Chapter 7, Problem Number 3. Okay, this problem setup gives us a number of pieces of data and then asks us to analyze a particular business decision. So it says, Down in our Lux Studios has spent $100 million producing an awful film, a depressing story about a miserable person. If the studio releases the film, the most cost-effective marketing plan would cost an additional $5 million, bringing the total amount spent to $105 million. Box office sales under this plan are predicted to be $12 million, which would be split evenly between the theaters and the studio. Additional studio rev revenue from video and DVD sales would be about $2 million. And then it asks, should the studio release the film? So let's think about what we have going on here. And we not only want to think about what our costs are, but we want to think about, well, obviously also what our revenues are. But we also want to think about whether or not those costs are what we would call recoverable. Or are they sunk? In other words, do we get them back if we choose to not promote this film or not release this film? And that's really what the crux of this problem is going to be. So what we can do is we can set up two columns here, and we can think about the revenues and costs for each of these options. I'll put on the left our column being don't release, and our column on the right being release. And we just want to think about our revenues and our costs under each of these scenarios. So I'll just put revenue and cost over here, and I'll put revenue and cost over here. And we'll think about where to put each piece of information that we were given. So the first piece of information says, Down in Our Luck Studios has spent $100 million producing this film. And then the question is, should it release the film? So what we notice is that this $100 million has already been spent regardless of whether the film is released. So I can put that $100 million here, and I can put it here. Now this is an example of a cost that's what economists would call sunk, or not recoverable. Because even if the studio chooses to not release the film, just put it in the trash bin, which, given the review here, seems like that's kind of where it should go. But even if it chooses to not release it, it's still incurred this cost. So it's not like that cost goes away. They don't get a refund on all the props that they use, on the extras payments, on the actors payments, and so on and so forth, if they choose to not release the film. The next thing that we see, it says, the most cost-effective marketing plan would cost an additional $5 million. So now, the marketing plan would only be in place, obviously, if the film were released. So we could put plus $5 million over here. But notice we don't put the $5 million over here because that cost is not incurred if we don't actually release the movie. So this marketing cost is a cost that is not yet sunk or still recoverable if we choose to not release the film. So we keep going. It says box office sales under this plan are expected to be 12 million, which would be split evenly between the theaters and the studio. So if we're thinking specifically about the studio's profit or the studio's well-being, we don't want to put the 12 million under revenue. We want to put half of that. We want to put 6 million. So we can put 6 million here. And notice, if we don't release the film, by definition, we're getting zero dollars of revenue. So I can just put a big fat goose egg over here. And we have, I think, one more thing here. It says additional studio revenue from video and DVD sales would be about two million dollars. So we could actually put plus two million over here, and over here only, because if I'm understanding this correctly, if the film is not released, it's not going to get video and DVD sales. Because we didn't say the choice was between releasing it in theaters and having it go straight to DVD. We said that the choice was between not releasing it at all and having it go to these two places. So if we're thinking about whether or not 
to release the film, we want to think about which one of these results in higher profit. Both of them might result in negative profit, but hey, think about it. Would you rather lose $100 million or $2 million? Both of those sound kind of scary and crappy, but losing $2 million is unambiguously better than losing $100 million, right? So here we don't really have anything to add up, but here, Notice that our total revenue would be eight million, and the total cost would be one hundred and five million. So we could think about what's going on here. If we were to say, well, what's our profit? So again, we have some definitions here. Revenue is the money coming in. Cost is either explicitly the money going out or the opportunity cost incurred. And then our economic profit is just our revenues minus our costs. So if we don't release the film, our profit was negative $100 million. That's kind of the bad scenario that I just pointed out, right? If we do release the movie, we can do the same thing. And we can say this time that our profit is $8 million minus $105 million, which if we were to do this math, you're like, okay, so it's negative $97 million, right? And we can see here that, again, both of these options are pretty bad, but we don't have the option to go back in time and not make the movie at all, which would be the ultimate option, but until you get, you know, until you get a TARDIS or something, that's not going to happen. So among the options we have available for us at this point in time, we can either lose $100 million by not releasing the movie, or lose $97 million by releasing the movie. Well, losing $97 million actually sounds like the least bad, or in another way, the best option. So the best option is actually to release the movie. We could have even thought about this trade-off or this analysis in a slightly different way. Rather than explicitly bringing this $100 million of cost into both of these situations, we could have simply taken the $100 million cost as given and thought about the incremental benefits and costs, or in this case, the incremental revenues and costs associated with releasing the film. So if we just took this $100 million cost as given and say, well, it's both here and here. Let's not think about it for a second. In that sense, what we're really doing is saying, well, after this $100 million cost is incurred, is it worth it to spend another $5 million to get another $8 million? Put that way, it seems pretty reasonable, right? You're like, oh, spend $5 million, get $8 million. Yeah, that sounds like a good trade-off. And given that this $100 million cost was already sunk and not recoverable, that's essentially the choice that you're making. And again, that leads us to analysis that releasing the movie is a good trade-off, even though once you bring in all the costs, the profit from doing so is still negative. But you could even think about this negative $97 million profit rather than absolute terms. You could say, well, compared to our next best option, we're actually netting ourselves $3 million. So we're netting ourselves something $3 million better than we could otherwise. Seems like a good idea.